it's pretty crazy that it seems like many of these people are getting their news from television or from Twitter, but it's human nature at this point, right? A lot of this content that gets yeah. shared around, that's where people are learning from. Um, walk us through uh, what is the difference uh, between the hydroxychloroquine, I think is how you say it, and yep. Um, yep. zithromycin. Um, what, what are those two things kind of at the, at the core, right? And, and understanding that most of the yeah. audience isn't going to be highly scientific, but just how would you describe yeah. those? So hydroxychloroquine is really used mainly as an immunosuppressant. So it's actually used for treatment in patients with rheumatoid arthritis or lupus. It kind of suppresses the immune system in the way to keep the body from attacking itself. It also, again, has antiviral properties and anti-parasitic uh, properties. So it's used as a uh, prophylactic or treatment for malaria. It's very popular in, in Africa. Zithromycin is typically known as being an antibiotic. Usually it's prescribed for bacterial infections. But studies have shown that it has antiviral properties. So coronavirus is a virus. It's not a bacteria. So that's a very important difference. That's why they can't give you antibiotics for just a, a seasonal a cold. I mean, you'll, you could ask for them. People often ask for them, but it really isn't going to actually help because it's a totally different type of species. But azithromycin actually has antiviral properties in bronchial epithelial cells. And this is where coronavirus will attach and infect is a lot of the respiratory tract. And so azithromycin, it makes sense why it could help treat or be preventative, uh, treat or be preventative for coronavirus. Got it. And then when you talk about those being used uh, in unison, is this actually like a um, a scientific mixture, right? Meaning that you're, you're uh, creating one single solution by combining these two, or is this two separate either shots or uh, however they're actually administered, they're, they're kept separate, but you basically take them at the same time? Correct. So in the French study, which is really the, the most data we have at this time on this combination therapy, it's two separate pills. So you take your hydroxychloroquine and then you take your azithromycin. And so what he did for the hydroxychloroquine, it was a 10 day treatment of it at 600 milligrams a day. And then azithromycin was a 500 milligram loading dose the first day and then 250 milligrams for, I believe, the next four days. Um, so oral form, separate pills, but used uh, in tandem combination. Got it. And so where do we go from here, right? We've identified these two drugs that we think um, have the potential to uh, be effective in uh, treating this. Um, we've got what I'll call kind of an initial early study um, that shows some uh, encouraging results. We obviously don't have time to go through kind of the traditional process, but as you mentioned earlier, we want to make sure people are safe and, and actually uh, can validate the efficacy of this. So like, what does that process look like or where do we go from here? So I think one of the, what I kind of alluded to earlier, one of the interesting things about hydroxychloroquine is so many people are already on it. So you already have a million or so people. So if there is a way to analyze that data that already exists and see if any of those people are getting infected with coronavirus. And as the uh, incidence or prevalence of coronavirus goes up, you should start to see overlap. You should start to see lupus patients or rheumatoid arthritis patients who are on hydroxychloroquine as becoming infected. And so if you were able to create a study that could analyze that group of people, and maybe it's through self-reported or some other means, then it'd be, a, I think, a safe way to evaluate the efficacy of this drug very quickly, as opposed to doing a controlled trial where you're placebo and all that. 